Okay, let's have a look at the third of the factorization techniques that you need to know about. We've done common factor, we've done difference of two squares. This now is known as the table method. The, the table method when we have 1x squared at the beginning of the quadratic expression. Okay, if you're asked to factorize that, first thing is you ask, does it have a common factor? Well, even though it's got x's in both of those, it doesn't have an x there. So there's no common factor. Is it the difference of two squared terms? Patently not. We've got one, two, three terms, so it's not the difference of two squared terms. So, if it's now got 1x squared, then it's going to be the third choice. If it's got x squared, x is in a number, it's going to be the easy table method. So, we now set up two brackets like so. If it's x squared, we have x and x. We've got to find the two numbers that go in there. We set up a table, that's why it's called the table method, with two headings, a times and a plus. Underneath the times goes a plus two, which is the number on the end. Whatever that number is, including the sign, goes in there. In front of the x, including the sign, we have plus three. So that goes underneath the plus in the table. The two numbers I'm looking for must both multiply together to give plus two and at the same time add up to give plus 3. The two numbers I'm looking for are plus 2 and plus 1. They multiply together to give plus 2, they add together to give plus 3. So the two numbers in the bracket are plus 2 plus 1, not the other way around, plus 1 plus 2, that's not a problem. That's it. If you expanded that out, you get the line above after you simplified it. Number 2. So if you had x squared minus uh, 3x minus 10. This one will be a little bit more difficult because there's some negatives going on here. Okay, factorise this. Common factor? No. Difference of two squared terms? Well, patently not. 1x squared x's number is going to be double bracket, easy table method, with x and x at the beginning. So, set up a table, times and plus. Negative 10 on the end under there. Negative 3x's, negative 3 under the plus. Two numbers that multiply to give minus 10. One must be minus, one must be plus. Got to be. You're going to use the army method adding them together to give an answer of minus 3. The minuses must win by 3. So I would suggest a 5 and a 2 would be the two numbers we need to be thinking about. They multiply together to give minus 10. Army method add them together, give minus 3. Simple as that. So minus 5, plus 2, or the other way around, doesn't matter. End of question. Number 3, how about x squared um, plus 1x minus 12? Something like that. Okay, for this one here, common factor? No. Difference of two squared terms? No. 1x squared, x is number. It's going to be easy table method. Double bracket x and x. What numbers go there and there? Table. Times and a plus. Underneath the times is negative 12. Underneath the plus, now, don't forget, plus x means plus 1x. So plus 1. Okay, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give minus 12. One must be minus, one be, must be plus. When you apply the army method adding together, Pluses win by 1. Well, that must surely mean it's negative 3 and a plus 4 to give negative 12 and army method add together to give plus 1. So negative 3 plus 4. Uh, last one, number 4. Last one on this um, bit of space that I've got. I've got I'll rub them out and do some more afterwards. I'm going to do uh, x squared minus. Um, 2x and then we'll have um, yeah, we'll do a plus, I'll do minus 24 like so. Okay. The only thing that really gets makes these hard is if they start making the numbers a bit bigger. So let's have a quick look at this one. Uh, common factor? No. Difference of two square terms? No. Uh, x squared x is number? Easy 
table method, x and x. To find the two numbers, I've run out of space over there, so I'll do the table over here, times and a plus, uh, minus 24 under the times, minus 2 underneath the plus. Two numbers that multiply to give minus 24, one's minus, one's plus. Uh, army method, the minus is written by 2, so if you think about it, 6 4s make 24, and there's a difference between 6 and 4 of 2. So 6 and 4 is the number combination I need to use. A minus 6 with a plus 4. 6 4 is 24, minus 24. Army method, minus 2. So minus 6, plus 4. <coughs> and there you go. All fairly straightforward. And really, one of these is quite likely to come up quite early on in the paper, because they're no more than grade C standard. Let's take things slightly further though with this basic idea. So if I get rid of these, still on the simple table method, let's have a look at number five then, uh, where we've got 2x squared plus 4x's, um, let's see then, <coughs> okay, I need to adapt this because otherwise it's not going to work out, okay? Uh, so I'm going to change this to x squared plus 6x, that'll be a bit better, and then plus 4, like so. Okay, you're looking at that. And you have to factorise that in the exam. Okay, and most people would look at that and they would um, say, is there a common factor? Um, difference of two squares? No, they think, no, it's, it's one of these double brackets. And they might try the inspection method, or possibly they might try the method that I'm going to show you in the next video, where you don't have 1x squared, you've got 2x squared, which is obviously a slightly more factorisation, a more difficult factorisation. If you just take your time, and go through the process slowly, you'll find that this is a really easy one to do. Ask yourself, one, does it have a common factor? Yes, it does. Two goes into everything. So you should take out the two as a common factor first. Everything else goes inside a bracket. Two times x squared is two x squared. Two times plus three x gives you plus six x. And two times plus two gives you the plus 4. So that's the first step. Next, can this factorise? Yes it can. Leave the 2 alone and you'll find that this now factorises again. It doesn't have a common factor this time. We've done the 2 common factor, that's gone. It's not the difference of two squared terms. It's three terms, but now it's only 1x squared. So it's going to be easy table method with x and x inside these two brackets. To get these two numbers, do a nice little table at the side. Underneath the time sign is the plus 2 here. Forget the 2 at the front, the plus 2. Underneath the plus sign is plus 3x, plus 3. Two numbers that multiply to give plus 2, and add up to give plus 3. Well, the two numbers are plus 2, plus 1. Multiply to give that, add up to give that. So they go plus 2, plus 1. So you get three things multiplied together uh, as the full factorisation. Okay? This is the same sort of idea that we did in the last video when we had a mixture of common factor with difference of two squares. This time we got common factor with a mixture of the uh, table method thrown in as well. Okay, so number six, how about 3x squared minus 3x's um, minus 18. I think that'll work. If not, I'll, I'll adjust it later if it doesn't work out. Okay, you're looking at that, you're going to factorise that. Okay, is there a common factor? No, take your time. Yes, there is. Common factor is 3. <coughs> like so. 
Okay, so we've taken out the fees of common factor. We now try and factorise this. Does that have a common factor? No. Is it the difference of two squared terms? No. Is it 1x squared, x is number, easy table method? Yes. Okay, if it's x squared it must be x and x. To get the two numbers, times and plus, minus 6 on the end, minus 6. Remember minus x means minus 1x, so that's minus 1. Two numbers that multiply to give minus 6, minus and a plus, got to be. Use army method on them, the minuses win by 1. So I would suggest it's got to be a minus 3 and a plus 2 to give minus 6. When you multiply, army method, add them together, minus 1. Minus 3, plus 2. So there you go, there's the full factorisation. Three things neatly multiplied together would give the same as the line you started with. Okay, uh, once again, quite a common little question. Obviously because it's a two-stage process, common factor followed by table method, it's a more advanced question than the ones we did in questions numbers 1 to 4, and therefore more likely to be a grade B, and more likely to be towards the centre of your paper. Okay, that's the end of this little section on easy table method. The next one we're going to look at is the hardest type of factorisation, which in the past I've done either by inspection method, or possibly... I may have shown you a method to do it, which uh, is actually the way I'm going to show you in the next video, because I know a lot of you want a set method of working these out because you've really struggled with inspection method. Okay, that's the end of this video.